Hello everybody. Welcome back to VW Family Farm. We're going to go try to help a neighbor out. I've gotten a couple of calls from friends of mine, neighbors, that they're having problems with beavers. Beavers can be a nuisance. Beavers can cause a lot of destruction on, on trees. Um, of course, you know that a beaver chews a tree down, but not only that, they also flood areas and kill all the trees around that, holding them in too much water. The roots can't get oxygen. But one of these beavers is actually in one of my neighbor's friends. It's in his pond. Catching a beaver out of a pond is a little bit more tricky than just catching them in a normal uh, dammed up area where they've got their runs and everything. In somebody's pond, there's not very many places that you can uh, set a beaver trap very easily. So we're gonna have to go over and see what what we've got on hand, see where we can put it, and mainly see if we can catch it. Living on a farm, living on a homestead, or even in the city, I guess you'd have problems like that. I've never personally lived in the city, so I can't honestly say that, but I know living on a farm, one thing that I highly recommend is you do learn how to trap. Even if you're not gonna dispatch the animal, if you're just gonna relocate it, I don't like to do that because uh, you will get overcrowding of that species or whatever in other areas. If I'm having problems with an animal of a certain species, I trap it, I dispatch it. I usually turn around and sell the pelts for uh, to a fur buyer. But all that being said, you definitely need to know how to trap. If you get a, uh, a possum getting into your chickens, you get a beaver that's getting into your pond, coyotes getting into your animals, and calves, sheep, whatever, Coyotes can get into your chickens too. Fox, you know, everybody's heard of a fox in the hen house. Those can wipe you out. I've actually got a friend of mine that they a fox wiped out his entire chicken flock and he had a fairly good sized flock. Not quite as big as mine, but a good sized one. So on this wall behind me, I've got snares. Those right there are like mink muskrat traps. Those are a, a small version of a conibear. These here are beaver traps or otter traps. They're a, a conibear 330. These here are dog proof traps, also called DPs. A dog's not going to stick his paw in the hole. A coon will stick his hand down in there and try to rake out the feed. That will trap the coon right there till you get back. You got all kind of leg hold traps. There is all sorts of traps you can buy. Uh, as you can see, I've got a big variety of them. But what we're going to be using today are these conibears. They are dangerous. You need to learn and know what you're doing before you, uh, I guess, get too crazy with them because they can break your hand. All right, in beaver trapping, you are going to need some essentials. Of course, a beaver trap. Like I said a while ago, you're going to, what I use is a 330 conibear. You can use a foothold trap. I just have a lot better luck with a conibear. You do need to put them in the water. All right, how a conibear works. These right here are springs. This one here is uh, the springs are already expanded. This trap is locked. There is no way that you're going to open that with your bare hands. So another essential tool when you're using the conibears are these scissors. You can do it with a rope, but it is very difficult. I'm going to show you how hard these things can be. Very difficult to squeeze that. You won't ever squeeze that by hand. If you do, I am definitely scared of you. Another tool that I recommend are gloves. These are gauntlets. They're shoulder length gloves. They keep your hands from freezing off in that cold water. And this is another must. Knee boots, hip boots, waders of some sort, because you're gonna have to get down in the water with the traps where the beavers are swimming.
right there is the first thing you want to look for. That's a telltale sign there's beaver in here. Like I said, beavers in ponds are really hard to catch. I think there may just be one beaver in here. There's not a whole lot of sign, but there is a little sign. He's got chews down here. I don't see any trees around that he started gnawing on to knock the whole tree down. He doesn't have a pathway yet established. So it's just going to kind of be a, uh, a playing around game to see if I can coax him into an area. Beavers do come to scents. It's called caster. I will probably put try to make like a fake caster mound and, and attract them over to this area. And this right here is a perfect, what you call a dive stick. You put this on top of the water over the top of your trap and it'll always make a beaver dive underneath. It's always hard on a fat boy to curl through a fence. All right, this right here is another reason that you don't want to leave a beaver in your actual pond that you're using for fish or anything else beavers will burrow into the ground as you can see maybe i don't know if you can see it through the camera but the beavers have got a beaver run that's where they swim in and out but it goes up under the bank and then you'll pan over here they've built their hut on land because what they're doing is they're burrowing under the ground the ground will actually kind of cave in every once in a while in spots and then they put sticks and everything on top of it. That way predators can't come at them from the top. But trapping in these beaver runs is pretty much a surefire way that you're going to catch a beaver. Because it's going to go in and out the house. Just like going in your front door. Alright. Had a problem a while ago. It's kind of like trying to figure out one of those little jigsaw puzzles. What I've got is I've got both springs on the same side and I could not figure out how to get it back across that. Because this right here is the trigger and it's got to be in the middle, but I got to get this back on that side. We worked and worked. And, well, all you got to do, put it down and it goes right across. Simple as that, just took a little bit to figure out. All right, when setting these, we've already compress the springs and put the safety latch on right there so you'll get both of them right in the middle pull your latch back in the center right there you'll open the trap up And you'll just swing that over and latch it on the top. And what that's going to do, of course, I'm doing this safely because I've still got my locks on my, on my springs. 
what that's going to do is when a beaver swims into that it trips that and these are going to slam after i take the safety latches off one thing you got to be careful with with these beaver runs they can get deep Oh, yeah, that one's going to get deep too. I'm standing on both sides of it. All right, when you do this, I'll leave the latches on until the thing is all the way set. Like I said, this is another spot where a beaver chew comes in real big handy. I always use rebar and push it down as far as it'll go. All right, now this thing is set, I gotta go down in the water and flip them latches up. My glove's got a hole in it. Right there. sun making that beard look red all right this right here's the reason I come out to this spot everything over there all those woods over there, thicket area that's my land that uh, that we've always called the beaver pond ever since I was growing up always been beavers out there we try to keep them in check but I also try not to trap everything out that right there's just another food source for us if we have to use it and actually it turned out really good my friend over at uh, Big Bear Homestead old Jason told me about making beaver burger did you just snarl your nose actually I really like them I think they are better than a regular hamburger but that's my opinion you mix beaver with some pork fat because beaver is a really lean meat and it's also a really clean meat I mean you gotta think they swim in the water all the time they chew on wood but anyway, all that out there, you can still see some water standing. All that out there was standing in water. This behind me, this here behind me, on this side of the creek, still got water in it. This whole area was flooded because the beavers had come down off my property onto the neighbor's property, built another dam, dammed the creek up, and it's just spilling out everywhere. They actually come in here with a mini excavator today, ripped the dam out. That's really gonna get the beavers to working. So we're gonna set some more traps out here. One thing that I had never seen, and he told me about it, is a beaver chewing on a, a cedar tree. I've never seen it until now. There's a whole lot more trees out here to chew on than a cedar tree. But, I mean, if he can get it down, he will. We're gonna show you a few more trees that the beavers have chewed down here just recently. They're fairly good sized trees. They're working on damming it all up. Like I said, I let them stay out here. I try to keep them in check, keep the numbers down, but I don't wanna trap it all the way out. So we're 
them overnight. Come back and check them tomorrow. Let's go see if we caught anything. what I'm talking about. <clears throat> I don't feel like the, the roads won't, like I want to get in this cold water. I'll leave that up to them and Bree and let them freeze like that. Oh, a little baby. We could be having Beaver Burger tonight. Hey, right there's another way you can make money on your homestead, farm, whatever. I guess you can live in the city and still make money doing it. Go out and trap you some beavers. I know around here, the county has a bounty on their tail because they cause so much destruction, they will back up creeks that'll... Sorry, I'm a little out of breath. That will uh, flood over gravel roads around here, messing them up. They'll even flood over paved roads. But, uh, so the county offers a bounty on the tail around here. This year they went up to $20 for that tail. On top of that, you can sell the pelts. Find you a fur buyer to uh, buy it. Some fur buyers will buy it uh, already skin out. Some will buy it just like this. And then also, if you're, if you're going to skin it out, you might as well harvest the meat off of it. That size beaver right there would be an awesome, awesome smoke beaver. You can tell with the caster. Yeah, and on top of that, you can uh, you can sell their caster glands. So there's several different ways to make money and save money right there. Fresh lettuce out of the greenhouse. Fresh beaver burger. I'm gonna put a little bit of Ben's famous barbecue or Daddy's famous barbecue. All right, I'm fixing to go eat my beaver burger, fries. Thank y'all for coming along with us. God bless. <laughs>